Okay, so my like Chromebook camera disappeared. So I am going to use YouTube for this one um, to record, but I'm gonna try to do this American Revolution lecture in like less than 25 minutes. So I'm gonna try to keep it as short as possible. I'm gonna set myself timer and um, let myself uh, know how long I've been talking. Um, but okay, here we go. So um, where we've left off um, was that the Americans have tried to reach out to the crown. They have um, petitions for their grievances. Um, they've done all of these, these things and none, none of it's working. King George is ignoring them and it's just not working for them. So the delegates come together at the Second Continental Congress in May of 1775. Um, again, still not interested in the independence, but they are addressing their grievances. Um, this was pretty conservative at the point of time since many of them were um, very um, influenced by the Enlightenment. But again, um, at the Second Continental Congress, um, they went in wanting to stay British citizens, but they came out of the Second Continental Congress deciding that they needed to go to war. So the most significant act of the Second Continental Congress is the decision for war and also the um, decision to make George Washington in charge of the Continental Army. Um, mostly um, political decision, while many people very much respected George Washington and he was, you know, a very good military leader. He did have some, you know, not so great parts of his past, but since he was for, for, from Virginia and Virginia was the most populous colony of the time, it was a little bit more political and hoping that Virginia would participate in the revolution if the leader of the army was from Virginia. Another thing that comes out of the Second Continental Congress is the declaration of the causes and necessity of taking up arms. So this, um, what, you call it? what am I saying? This declaration is written by Thomas Jefferson and John Dickinson, and they basically draft up this second set of appeals um, to King George um, and the British people saying like, here's our grievances again. Um, and also like, here's why we're taking up arms. Like these are the reasons why we're getting a army ready. Um, we still wanna be British citizens, but we are, we're getting an army ready. Um, so just to let you know, here's how we're gonna, you know, raise money. Here's how we're gonna create an army and Navy. Like we have a plan. Um, the last ditch effort for the moderates um, in the Continental Congress um, was sending the Olive Branch Petition. So in the Olive Branch Petition, they say, you know, we are loyal, um, we want to have peace, please reconsider the intolerable acts, um, we're giving you an olive branch, and olive branches are a sign of peace. Um, again, King George throws it away, re uh, refuses to recognize the content of the Congress, because if he does, then he gives them some legitimacy, and because of that, the war is going to rage on. Um, so I'm going to go over kind of the more key battles. Again, many more battles happened during the American Revolution, but I'm just going to go over the ones that had a very strong impact on the revolution and the colonists. Um, so in June of 1775 is the Battle of Bunker Hill. Um, basically what happens is that this is viewed as an American victory. Um, so awesome for America. Um, and all these um, redcoats, over a thousand of them, um, just assumed that they had a good position because they were looking down basically in Boston. So as they are like moving into Boston, they're just mowed down by over 1500 American riflemen. Um, and 
eventually, though, after they're like, pew, 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 a lot of pewing, um, Americans are going to run out of gunpowder, and that's how they're stopping them from coming in. Um, and so they are forced to abandon Bunker Hill. Um, but um, this is seen as an American victory because Britain is going to have very heavy losses. A lot of these battles are not going to be um, determined by who won or lost ground, but um, based on who lost the most lives. Um, so because the British lost so many lives, this is also the bloodiest battle of the American Revolution. Um, and eventually the British Army will leave the city um, to start conducting the war from New York. Um, following Bunker Hill, this is when King George is going to say the colonies are in rebellion. Um, and in order for the British to fully wage war against the colonies, he had to say they are rebelling so that he can then, um, really, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, justify, um, the amount of weapons and soldiers he's going to send over to the colonies to try to stop the rebellion. Um, he also is going to hire over 1,800 um, mercenary soldiers um, that were German. Um, and these German mercenaries were also known for their brutality. And the colonists were kind of shocked that the king would hire such brutal mercenaries because a lot of colonists saw this as like a family conflict and the fact that the king would set such brutal people against his own family um, was very troubling to them. Um, so in early 1776, most Americans did not desire independence. They were proud to be British citizens. Um, they just wanted better treatment with inside the empire. Um, and a lot of Protestants were seeing that there was like a moral obligation to better the world and um, to give more people the blessings of liberty and um, that they, if they were part of the British empire, they would have a bigger impact. Um, a lot of them also wanted those natural rights that were outlined from John Locke. Um, so many of them were influenced by those enlightenment ideals and Thomas Paine. Um, so as we shift towards wanting um, independence, the uh, British hiring the Hessians was shocking um, to the colonists also. Um, the British were burning American towns. Um, and also the governor of Virginia promised freedom to slaves. Oh my gosh. If they would fight for Britain. Um, and so this promise of freedom to slaves is what persuaded a lot of Southern col colonial elites to join the war effort. Now, this is pretty controversial. Um, it's actually in the news right now. Um, there is a project called the um, 1776 Project, um, and President Trump um, has come out against it and wants there to be a more patriotic education. Um, and so this project basically claims this, that the American Revolution was fought to keep slavery. So this little piece of evidence where, you know, the British were promising um, freedom to slaves that fought for the British and the Southerners were then convinced to fight this war, that could be a piece of evidence for. Is that the complete and, um, you know, that's the whole story? No, it's not the whole story. But for Southerners keeping their slaves for their economy, was that a reason to fight the American Revolution? Yeah, probably. Um, but we can get into that a little bit more later. Um, so all of these things are pushing the colonists towards independence. And then we get good old Thomas Paine and him writing um, Common Sense in 1776. Um, 
bestseller in the colonies. This literally went what we would call viral today. Um, it was propaganda in favor of independence. Um, and basically, Thomas Paine says Britain is going is being inconsistent, um, so inconsistent that independence was the only way forward. Um, and it what it does not make sense that such a tiny little island um, would be in charge of something so much bigger. Like, why would that make sense that such something so small would control something so big? Um, and like in Hamilton, he says, why should a tiny island across the sea regulate the price of tea? Um, and basically, he also says America has a sacred mission, a moral obligation to the world to be um, a beacon of a democratic, independent, Republican, like, amazingness and to show the way forward. Um so Thomas Paine's common sense is going to be written for the common people. He's just arguing that it makes common sense to go for independence. This is going to be one of, if not the biggest thing that convinces everyday Americans to switch to being for independence. So because so many Americans were now persuaded, Congress is persuaded as well. Um, and... On June 7th of 1776, this guy named Richard Henry Lee proposes independence at the Second Continent of the Congress. He says, these United Colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states. Where's the credit for Richard Henry Lee? He never gets any credit. But he was the first to actually propose independence at the Second Continent of the Congress. So later... Um, it is going to be adopted in Ju on July 2nd um, after a lot of deliberation, and then it will be shown to the public on July 4th. Um, so, yeah. Oh, uh, so, once they've decided this, they say, hey, Thomas Jefferson, will you draft a declaration of independence? Um, ben Franklin, John Adams, Roger Sherman, Robert Livingston, and Jefferson, they all start editing this document, and um, which will become the Declaration of Independence. Um, so they voted for independence on July 2nd, and it was formally approved on July 4th because there was a little editing that had to go. And so it was always debated back then, um, what was the true independence day, day, the day that they voted on it or the day that they actually signed it and made it real. Um, so the three major parts of the Declaration um, of Independence, um, the preamble, mostly influenced by John Locke, if not almost straight up um, copied and pasted. Um, so it stated the rights of the colonists to break away if their natural rights were violated. So if life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness um, were violated, they had the right to rebel. It also stated that all men are created equal, kind of going against that divine right of king that this king has, um, King George has the right to rule them. Um, it also lists 27 grievances from the colonies. Um, by Congress, this is seen as the most important part. Um, eventually it will, um, or it was 24 grievances and then it will be changed to 27. Um, and then the other part of the declaration is the actual declaring of independence. Um, and it says at the end, we are now basically our own country. We are the United States of America. Um, so since they are declaring their own country, the result of this is that they can now receive former aid um, from other countries saying, hey, we're not a part of Britain you hate them, give us some money and weapons. The next major part of this is that the American Revolution can also be seen as a civil war because uh, about a third of the colonists were patriots, a third were loyalists, and a third were neutral. Um, we don't know exact numbers because no one was going around making a census of like, hey, like which side do you support? Um, but the loyalists um, were also called Tories. Um, they accounted for about 20% of the population. Um, they wanted to return to colonial rule and they were loyal to the king. 
for the most part, loyalists were pretty conservative, wealthy, educated, and were fearful of democracy, which they believed would lead to mob rule. Um, they were the older generation, um, the younger generation, which almost always is the case is the more revolutionary generation. Um, usually, as you see, the older generation is, for the most part, more conservative than the younger generation. And in, when I say conservative, I mean like want things to stay the same. Um, and that makes sense. If you're older and things have been one way your whole life, you pretty much want it to stay the same. When you're younger, you haven't had as much life experience and you see the problems of society and you want them to change so that you yourself can live a better life that you imagine. Um, let's see, loyalists were mostly Anglican as well. Um, and the loyalists were most influential in the middle colonies. Um, oh, sorry. I literally cannot stop yawning when I do this. Hopefully that will change. Um, but they were mostly ineffective at joining allegiance of those neutral colonists. Um, patriots, sometimes they were called Whigs, which was the um, opposition party in um, Great Britain of the Tories. Um, not only did the Patriots have to fight the British soldiers, but they also had to fight loyalists at the same time. They were most numerous in New England. Um, they also were the minority because they were less than 50% of the population because the other part of the population was loyalists and people that were neutral. But Patriots were better at gaining support from neutral colonialists. Um, they had the passion behind them and um, they were saying like, here's what your life could look like. Um, and since this was a civil war also, basically uh, about 80,000 loyalists are going to flee the colonies um, during and after the war. Um, a lot of these loyalists are gonna be regarded as traitors by the Patriots. Um, they were told that this wouldn't happen, but their estates would eventually be confiscated and sold. Um, 50,000 of those loyalists fought for the British, so they were seen as traitors. And I don't think you want to live in the country where that you fought against. So many of them will move back to Great Britain or um, move into Canada, um, but they will flee. Um during or between 1776 and 1777, um, Britain is basically going to abandon New England, which is where most of the Patriots' stronghold was. Um, and they're going to now focus on the mid Atlantic and the middle um, states, um, hoping that since those were a little bit more loyalist heavy, they would have better ground there. Um, in late 1776, the revolutionary cause was unraveling. Um, a lot of soldiers were deserting. Uh, other soldiers were just about to finish their term of service. Um, and General Washington is like, if we don't get a decisive victory, you know, we're gonna lose. We need to bump up morale. Um, so in on December 26 of 1776, um, Washington is going to cross the Delaware River, which you might see in that picture before of Washington crossing, crossing the Was Washington crossing the Delaware. Um, super icy, super cold, um, and he is crossing from Pennsylvania to New Jersey, which is right outside where the Hessian mercenaries were. Um, so at the Battle of Trenton, which is what's going to happen, he's going to surprise and capture about a thousand of the Hessians who were basically hung over because this is the day after um, Christmas and they are going to um, kind of catch them sleeping um, and they win because they are able to capture this many people. So this is a stunning um, upset for the Americans and um, it's going to really help them out there. Um, the next battle that is going to be a huge turning point, um, it is not only um, a huge turning point, but 
this could be argued as the most important battle of the American Revolution. Um, but the British were trying to capture New York and basically cut off all of the New England states from the rest of the United States. Um, Benedict Arnold will save New England by slowing down the British. Um, but eventually Benedict Arnold is going to betray the United States by attempting to hand over control to the British. So he's going to become a traitor later on because he's a big freaking baby and didn't get promoted basically the way that he wanted to. So he's like, wait, 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 wait. like I want to like be big and bad and I didn't get it. So I'm just going to become a traitor. Um, so basically what happens is um, the Americans win, the British are going to surrender his entire command at Saratoga. And because this was such a big and decisive victory, the French are going to decide to openly um, help the Americans. They had been helping um, before that, but it was more of like in secret. But this victory um, is going to allow the French to openly come out and say, we are helping the Americans. We hate you, um, Great Britain. They've always hated each other. Um, but now we're openly supporting them um, instead of secretly supporting them, um, which is something countries do in general. Like you can secretly support somebody, but once you come out, it's just like a much bigger deal. Um so they are sending ships, they're sending aid, they're sending money, they're sending weapons, they are sending people to fight to guarantee independence. Um, so this becomes a big deal. And now Britain is going to be faced with a world war because after the French um, start supporting the Americans, so will, so will Spain, so will the Netherlands. And um, Saratoga's victory will become this like revival for the Americans. They're like, wow, we can win this. Um, so this is where I'm gonna stop because I'm at 22 minutes. Um, I will post a part two for this. Um, but yeah.